This is the video where I will tell you everything you need to know about Lightroom to start with my editing videos um, or if you want to join my workshop somewhere um, outside of Poland, of course, because um, uh, all the workshops outside of Poland are in English. The ones in Poland are uh, in Polish, so if you are trying to sign in for a Polish workshop, just um, just ask if it's in English, probably not. Uh, for those of you who are watching this um, in English and you want a Polish version, there is one on YouTube as well. So this is going to be all about Lightroom, how you start up there. So for all the beginners, maybe also for people who have been using Lightroom, but um, do not um, know all the features there. And it's also about the new Lightroom um, that is um, the current version right now as I'm recording this. I had a video before on an older version. It's It's been changing throughout the years. So um, a lot of new things um, showed up and also they changed the way uh, you use the masks. And it's also good for people who want to um, purchase my courses that I did with expert photography. I think those are the best courses that I've done so far. And I have been receiving a lot of messages that uh, that's a lot of content for um, this price. So um, check uh, the, uh, the links in the description. I think you will like this course. Uh, okay, let's, so let's um, dive into Lightroom. Right now I'm in the library mode. There's library and there's develop that we will be talking about. The rest of the modes are, well, they're there. They're not uh, crucial uh, to use Lightroom. So we'll be talking about only those two. Let's talk about the interface. We have um, in the left top corner, we have navigator um, and zoom options. Right now I'm zoomed into fit so that image fits the size of this window. If I click on 100%, it's going to zoom in to 100%. I can zoom in even more, like for example, 400%. And if I click on this image again, it's just going to zoom out to fit again, or it can go between those two. Um, and also you can move around, like if you're zoomed in and you just want to zoom into another spot, that's how I do it. I basically use this navigator to zoom in or to find the right spot in my image. Uh, below we have catalog and it says how many photographs are imported to Lightroom. People get a little confused with what it is. It basically shows um, how your photos are organized on your disk. And an important thing to... Um, to know right now is first thing that Lightroom um, it works a little different than Photoshop. Photoshop opens one file, makes changes to it, then creates its own um, type of file like PSD and then saves the PSD file and then you can export also a JPEG file from that PSD. Whilst Lightroom doesn't open um, photos one by one, it just kind of like you give uh, Lightroom the access to the photos that are on the disk. Uh, it, it's not a storage or anything, so it just it'll just show the photos that are on your disk, that, but it won't actually store them. So if you like, I don't know, delete Lightroom from your uh, computer, the photos will, won't disappear. They will be exactly where they were. Now it, it's just a program. It's it doesn't. Basically, it doesn't change the photos. Um, it does all the filters that you do are not um, applied to the photos so much as they are kept in Lightroom catalog, just in the program and the photos are lying there on your disk, untouched. If you want to kind of combine the original photo with all the changes that you've made in Lightroom, you have to export the photo. Uh, but whatever you do in Lightroom, that original file will, will not be um, changed. Also, the, the other thing is that people um, often kind of import the photos to Lightroom and they see them here uh, in folders um, and then they kind of move them around. For example, 
uh, you know, which may change the location. I, for example, they upload it on their um, built-in disk in their computer and then they move it to a um, external disk and then uh, they can't find it. They try to import that again. Lightroom doesn't allow to import the photos that are already imported and that's when they get confused. So um, one thing is that you have to you have to remember that um, it shows you photos that are imported in here um, and if you can't, like for example, like I'm, I'll show you this, this disk which is not connected right now and all the photos are kind of like grayish and you can see if I click here, you can see the photo, it knows that the photo is here, it knows even like the, the name and, and um, uh, important information about this file and it has the preview of the file but it I, I'm not able to do anything over here because I, if I go to develop it says the file could not be found because the disk is not connected. Now, so if you have this problem what you could do is basically locate the, the, the photos if you move them from one spot to another you have to right click and find missing folder or file miss, find missing files if you click here it is just going to ask you to find the missing files uh, but I think the best way is kind of to keep it clean and uh, once you import it and you want to move from one place to another you can move it in Lightroom and I think that's that's the better way so for example I can grab this file here and basically move it to another disk uh, if I need to I'm, I'm just gonna mm, keep it where it was but you can just do it like this uh, this way and this way Lightroom is not going to lose your files uh, so basically those are, uh, let's go back to um, what I was saying before, those are folders, we have uh, our side note, that this is my cat going crazy if I talk to myself, and uh, he's been running around the house, and I had the same thing when I was recording on in Polish, so he goes crazy, and, and you might be noticing him or hearing him from time to time. All right, so I would get the folders here. So if I want to find a file, just have to click on a specific um, folder and I'm just going to show me the photos taken on that particular day. As you can see, I have some kind of like some uh, just dates, which is great. This is, this is what Lightroom does. It creates folders with dates and then imports the photos from that day to that uh, folder with a date. And that keeps it nice and organized. But some people do not kind of remember what, what was going on on that day and, and the great thing about it is you can right click and rename the folder and I sometimes do that and I just rename and then add uh, a specific phrase to that so that I remember what kind of a session that was. And below that we've got collections. Collections are also great because sometimes I do like I go out and take photos of like I have a session but after after the session, I can see like, oh, there's a great sky and I just want to grab a few photos of that sky. I would like to have those um, stored somewhere, like, and they, they will be stored, but I would like to have like an easy access to that without actually moving those, um, those photos from that um, original place where it was. Um, just have the access to all the skies that I have and this this is like this is this comes with collections so we can create collections for anything actually and I'll show you that I have some uh, skies collections I also have uh, see those are the skies and the great thing that is that you can have one photo in many collections it's there on your disk in a folder uh, with the date that on the day that you took it, but then you can access them from the collections. It really keeps everything nice and organized and allows me to find the files that I want and um, it make, makes my work so much easier. Below we have some publishing services which I don't use so I won't be talking about this and this is an import and export box. We'll be back to this one because importing is an important part of, um, of this video and I if if someone asks me like what what do we need to know about Lightroom before we come to the workshop I would say that you will need to know how to just import the files and basically where all the um, all the tools are I will show you how to use them but it's it's better if you already know where to find those tools okay we got um, film roll on the bottom which shows the photos from that folder 
Uh, and I like to have this open because then I can scroll easily through the photos and then uh, if I do something to one photo I can just basically um, take all the settings and paste it to another uh, image. Then there's something here like below this big uh, image we've got this little um, toolbar. Uh, you can click T on your keyboard to show this or hide it. So if you don't see it, then just click T as toolbar. And then we've got this little arrow on the right side that is going to um, make like some options visible here or invisible. Uh, I think it's best if you at the beginning, you just kind of open up everything and then with time you will see which things you need and which you don't need. And then you can just basically turn off some of these. First, first one is the one that's showing uh, all the photos from that session. Uh, you can change the size of the thumbnails here by moving this little arrow. One uh, image here, there's an um, X, Y, you can basically compare two photos if you need to. This is the one that I use from time to time. For example, I got, right now I've got all the photos, I can show all the photos, but sometimes I just want to see like two or three together to kind of figure out if, uh, if that's a good like set for like an Instagram post or something like a Facebook post. Uh, so then I use this one and then I'm just going to click this one, this image and this image, for example, and this image, and I can view the three one next to another and then sometimes also click shift plus tab and that hides all the stuff around and it shows you only the three photos. Uh, shift tab again shows um, everything, um, all those toolbars and everything back. And then you've got a few options which are important when um, selecting images. We got a flag here which um, Right now this one is flagged, so I'm just going to click on a photo that has not been flagged yet. Um, and if I click P on my keyboard, it's going to flag this as pick. If I click X on my keyboard, it's going to flag this as rejected. If I don't want any flag, I can click U to remove the flag. Then we've got those stars, we can be added by clicking um, 1 to 5 on your um, keyboard or just you can basically click on, on the arrows here. Uh, if you have five and you want to have the back to zero, just click zero. And then we've got six, seven, eight, nine. Those are the colors. I don't know how to how to click the purple one because then it says like six is red, seven yellow, eight, nine, nine, and then zero is zero stars. So I don't know how to uh, click the purple one on the keyboard. If someone knows, then please comment down below. And then we've got filters. So, for example, I already have some photos flagged in this um, in this roll strip, and I want to only see the photos that I flagged. And then we've got this black. Um, toolbar here and if I click on filter it's going to slide um, and show us all the possible filters and I can click on the, for example on the flag and it's going to only show me the flag photos. You can have all the sorts of combinations like flagged plus I don't know marked uh, with like five stars and so on and you can have all those crazy combinations and then filter it up as you wish and if you want to um, turn off the filtering, you can just click here and it's going to um, show you no filters and back on the filters. So filters are on and off here. On the right side we've got histogram and a few quick develop and a few other options which are not, I think these are not crucial to um, for Lightroom basis, so we're just going to skip them. Okay, and before we go to develop mode, we got this import window, which is super important uh, to understand and basically knowing how to import your photos, which, this is the basis of the basis. So this is the most important thing. Right now we got source on the left side, we've got a couple of options on the top, uh, and then we've got um, uh, many options on the right side. Let's click on the devices and I'm titled, which is going to show, show us the card, the SD card that I have in here right now. Right now it's loading up 
all the photos that are on this card which have not been uh, imported which have not been imported to my Lightroom before because I I clicked only new photos. So uh, if I clicked all photos, it could be it could be showing me all the photos, um, but those that have been already imported would be just great. Uh, I can show you like here and let's just move it down there. See, those are the photos that have been already imported to Lightroom, uh, so it won't allow me to um, to uh, import them again just because I had. Uh, this don't import suspected duplicates clicked, um, which is actually good. If I didn't click it, then it would import those photos again, but uh, it would just give it like slash two, um, like we just change the name to like, the name of the file slash two. And uh, so I'll have double the photos that already are in there, which is, um, in my opinion, uh, it creates a lot of mess in my opinion. So it's actually good to have this don't import suspected duplicates. And if you see that it's grayed out, it means that it was already imported and then you can um, basically search for that file uh, in your Lightroom to find if it's already there and basically to find the location. And then we got um, copy as DNG as option here, right now chosen. It's going to, it means that it's going to copy from my card to my disk to a chosen destination. And it's going to convert those from the ARW that I have for my Sony to a DNG file, which is a standard um, all file for um, from Adobe. And I do recommend converting your photos to DNG, but also it takes time. So if you are in a hurry and you just want to uh, download your photos very fast, you can just click the uh, copy option. If you already imported those files from your SD cards to your desk and you just don't want to move them or copy them anywhere, you can use the move or add option. Sorry, you can use the add option and if you want to move them, like change the location, you like you imported them to your internal um, computer disk and you just want to have them on external, you can move them uh, in here. I, I think I never used move option uh, ever. I did use sometimes add option if I already had it on my disk and I just wanted to add those photos to Lightroom catalog so that Lightroom has the access to those files. Uh, on the left side we've got file handling and we've got build previews which is an important part um, of importing and but I already created a video about Lightroom previews so I'm not going to repeat all that stuff I will link this video up here and we've got Build smart previews. Smart previews are like the type of previews that allow you to work um, even if you don't have the access to the original file, which some people like. But honestly, I don't use them that much, so um, so it would be quite difficult for me to create a video about something that I don't do. And then we've got destination, which is important to, to choose the right uh, location for your files if you are uh, copying them from your SD card. Then click here all the days that you don't want. For example, if you just want to upload one session and uh, not all the other stuff, you can basically unclick all the uh, all the other dates. And if you just want a specific photo, uh, you can basically turn off um, or turn on. You can just basically uncheck all and just say like, okay, I just want this this photo. Okay, I think that's it. And well, there's uh, there's one thing that I didn't mention uh, that. It will create a, a date format uh, folder for your photos. Um, of course, you can just put it into subfolder and um, or just throw everything into one folder, um, depending on what you what choices you make here uh, into subfolder, uh, and you can name that subfolder somehow. I really like those date format folders because that allows me to basically find all the photos easily. And as I showed you before, you can add some kind of description to the folders. I'm going to cancel here and let's go to develop. And I, this is going to be quite a short one because everything on the, uh, on, the, on the bottom is basically the same. What changes here are presets. Like also Navigator is the same. There are presets. I have one preset on my website 
Uh, basically, I don't use those kind of color coloring presets because I do everything by hand and really depends on the original shot. So I, I'm not a huge believer in presets because uh, it really depends on what I want to achieve. Um, and, and, I, and I've seen that basically presets look different on different um, images. Like if you have like, for example, wintertime image, the, the ones that made the greens look a little more pale will not work because then there are no greens and so on. But I do have one preset that helps me to do all the retouching very, very fast. And I created this for you and it's free on my website. And there's a little video here on how I created this and how you can use it. And then we got snapshots, which basically saves the moment in, in history when you're editing something. Like take a look at history. You can uh, basically scroll through those uh, steps in history and it's going to show you uh, in the navigator all the steps that you've done. And then you can save a snapshot, um, like right now it shows, saves that date right that I have right now. And then if I make any changes, then I can basically go back to let me just do something crazy here. And if I want to go back to what I had before, I can, of course, I could just look for the, for the step in history. I can just basically click, click on the snapshot and it's going to take me back to where I was before all those crazy changes. And I sometimes use that on a workshop. For example, if someone as is editing and it's stepped on some point and I'm coming over, I say like, okay, but I would do it differently. And then I save the snapshot of what a student has at the moment and I do my changes and show them like okay this is what you had and this is what how I would do this so you can go back to wherever you were and kind of like do it your own way or repeat what I did uh, it's, it's up to you and then on the left side we've got the tools which already changed a lot from the previous versions um, first, we've got all the sliders here that right now are clicked and it starts with basic. Then we've got tone curve, HSL, um, color grading. I did a video on color grading. I'm also going to link it up here. Uh, sorry for that. Those are, uh, this is the dog chasing the cat. Uh, we've got sharpening here and a few other options. Um, those apply to the whole image. And if you want to apply something to a part of an image, that's where a mask will come in. The second tool is cropping. I think that you can basically, it's, it's a very small box. So if, uh, if you're just starting up with Lightroom, I think you can just basically uh, go through all the things here and figure it out yourself how to use that. I think it's very simple. Then we've got this little band-aid. And those are options to remove stuff from uh, from an image. I also had a video on removing stuff, but that was done on an older version. I think I'm still going to link it, but it was done on an older version of Lightroom, so it changed. And uh, that they just added those two, the Band-Aid and the Clone Stamp, were just uh, here, but in, not in the form of those thumbnails but it was just like it would set say um heal and clone and then they added a new option which is this one it's kind of like we'll figure out uh what i'm just going to zoom in and show you on maybe on some kind of like well where would i show it okay maybe on this thing here so this one was kind of more like artificial intelligent option which is going to um, figure out what kind of information should be placed there basing on uh, on the surrounding of that spot. And the others are the ones that you choose the information yourself. This band-aid here then you can choose where, where it picks up the information from. Uh, like in this case, it's going to take the eye and it pastes the texture from this spot here, but it will colorize it so it looks a little more, um, maybe it will just blend a little better. Then we've got the clone stamp, which is just going to take the information with the color. It's not going to try to blend in anything. It's just going to basically copy the information from one spot to another. And then we've got the red eye reduction. Uh, which I don't use because it only happens if you shoot with a built-in flash, um, which I don't do, so I never use it. Just in case you do, there is an option to remove that red eye. 
uh, effect. And then we've got masking. And I think this is the most important part. Right now I have some masks already done. So I'm just going to quickly go to an image that has not been touched before so you can see how it looks before you do anything, any mask. And then we've got, see that kind of created a little box over here instead of that list of masks. And then we've got subject. We can detect the subjects that are going to create a mask around your subject. And right now it's just kind of like shown from the top, so it's um, so it's not that easy to show. But um, um, let me just find an image where she was um, maybe uh, in here with the dog, and then I can click, click on that subject and just going to pick the subject only. You can um, I'm going to delete that mask so you can see everything from the from the beginning. And you can uh, select only the background or the sky. In this case, there's no sky, so I'm going to show you that. Uh, you can create, uh, also pick objects uh, just by painting on them. Um, hopefully, that's going to pick the dog only. And uh, also, cool option if you want to do something specific to a specific part of the image. Um, and also sometimes uh, it kind of can create a really weird options when the subject kind of looks like it wasn't there. It was kind of like pasted in afterwards. So be careful with those options. Those are really cool, but can um, end up with uh, quite weird results. Now we've got a brush. Um, basically you brush around and paint around with a brush like um, I think it's self-explanatory. But uh, the only things that I would like to talk about is the settings. Here we've got the size and feather. Feather means that if you've got the feather very, very low, it's going to create a harsh, um, harsh edge. The bigger feather is going to make the brush softer. Then we've got flow and density. And I'm uh, like throughout all the years, I find that using flow on 100 is very difficult and it's difficult then to create a very nice and soft and blending in brush. So I would recommend to keep the flow around 50. Whilst density, I don't really find the use of density that much and I always keep it on 100. Um, especially that right now they introduce some uh, this new slider, which is called a mount, which basically is a kind of a similar option to what density could be. So um, I think that just keep it on 100 and you'll be fine. And then we've got all the options here from in this box down to where it says basic. Those apply only to the uh, right now to the to the area that I painted up with a brush. So if I brighten up every, or darken down and anything over here just going to apply to where I already painted with a brush. I can then, even if I already do something in here, I can still paint in or I can remove, I, I will just click option on my keyboard and that's going to change it to a um, to an erase. You can just basically click on erase uh, to erase parts. If you want to get rid of that mask, you can just play, uh, click delete on your keyboard and it's, it will just disappear. And then we've got linear gradient. I use that with portrait. I rarely use that. I would find it more useful when you do like landscape photography. But with portrait, it just basically creates a straight line, which um, rarely happens if you shoot portrait. So I find it a little too harsh. But uh, well, maybe you will use it. So that's um, that's something that will just create a filter that will be will have all its power in here up to this line then it's going to start disappearing up to this line here uh, above this line it, it won't be uh, visible at all so we can just basically see i'm darkening and it's only darkening the, the bottom part where the filter started i'm going to delete that and there's a radial gradient which i actually like right now i can see two circles if i make it bigger see that if I make it bigger or smaller that feather slider changes. This is the same as with those uh, brushes. So if the feather is very high to 100 it's going to create a very very soft 
uh, brush, uh, soft filter and if it's uh, down to zero it's going to create a harsh line so if I do something like this it's going to show like a circle and if you move it all the way up it's going to be very very nice and soft. Of course you can apply all the all those other things. Um, another cool feature that was introduced with the new mask is that you can add or subtract from that particular filter so if I click on add I can create a brush and basically add this with the same settings that I had see and then I can paint it the same settings somewhere else I kind of change the, the, the shape of that filter and then I can then subtract for example and then I can subtract for example the subject uh, from this thing so that I can click subtract subject and it just basically subtracted the subject and I have only uh, the background kind of colorized like that and you can do the opposite so all the options all the all the things that you can do are very creative and it really, really allows us to do uh, the work easier and better. There are a couple of other things like if you select the subject, um, I'm sorry, if you select people, uh, it's going to use the, uh, right now there are no people found, um, but if I use any kind of other shot where you can see her a little better, uh, and if I select uh, people here it should show me it can show me all her features of so the face skin body eyebrows and so on and i have another video i'm going to link it down below it's the same video as i mentioned when talking about the presets uh, where i show you how i kind of like do i easy quick retouching in lightroom uh, using those options here i think Basically, that's all you need to do or know about Lightroom. So basically, where how to import the photos, where to find the tools, and basically understand how Lightroom catalog works. And again, uh, if you want to know how I take my photos, how I edit them, there is a great course uh, that I did with Expert Photography, and I link it down below in the description of this video. Now make sure to subscribe and to like the video, comment if you have any thoughts on this, if you if I didn't mention anything important, I may also create new videos. If you want to um if you want me to create a video on a specific topic, then please also comment down below so I know what you need. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!